precisely. Well, Fakta Zamari, does the government see any kind of association as, as a threat to the regime? Um, do you know, like um, pointing out that after revolution, they have, um, I have to continue that, for minorities, they have given more rights in their constitution following on what you mean. But for, for minorities, it's different. They have, in their constitution, they have given them rights. But in, uh, people asking for uh, implementation of their own constitution uh, gets people arrested, like Abbas Lissani. He's in prison for over a year. For ju one, of the, one of the things he asked was, implementation of constitution now he's in prison he was tortured and his family is being threatened and others as well even having a sign of ask in in minority areas asking for implementation of article 15 or 19 gets gets you long prison terms and torture it's and all the court orders in in Iran none of them are according to Iranian law it's, everything is made up all the vague uh, crimes are uh, um, written down in these court orders and sometimes they even they they have court orders with um, thing um, with accusation like uh, um, browsing internet or uh, six months for browsing internet or voting for candidates that they have selected uh, pe for people to vote uh, for uh, and uh, or um, young activists like Mohammad Reza Vaspur is in prison for uh, writing that I, he's a Turk um, uh, he has been in and out of prison since 14 and he was tortured and um, you see that it's there's there's this thing going on as you said that none of them are committing any crimes they are not breaking any Iranian laws but at the same time uh, asking for their rights that they have given to them in the Constitution uh, in prison well, Heba El Shadzali, is the Iranian government succeeding in keeping people from having um, relations with other people in association, in, in, in civic organizations, whether they be labor or, or ethnic or, or some other kind of combination? No. The, the outpouring has been amazing. There, February 15th, 2006, in 16 different countries around the world, on that day, everyone stood in global solidarity. The global labor movement stood up and said, no, this is not acceptable. So precisely as Roya was saying, this is appealing to their peers, to the labor movement, to workers, men and women around the world who are standing up and saying and supporting their brothers and sisters in Iran, irrespective of what governments are saying or doing, because we're talking about fundamental core labor standards that are e exactly like you see in the Human Rights Declaration and that are accepted universally. And Iran is a member of the International Labor Organization. It has a duty to respect those fundamental rights. So on August 9th, there will be another, there's another call for action, for a day of solidarity for both Salehi from Saqez and for Mansour Osanlu from the Sherkat i Wahed bus drivers. So absolutely not. It has been absolutely amazing the number of workers around the world who have stood up to support their brothers and sisters in Iran. Well, Roy Borman, let's talk a little bit about how people are in Iran are trying to associate with one another and how they're trying to communicate. One of the things we've seen that the regime does regularly is that not only is, has there been a crackdown on protests against the regime, organization, peaceful protests, but also cracks down, crackdown against anyone who would report on those protests. And, and of course, in, in the West, perhaps the best known case of this is of um, Zara Kazemi, who was a, uh, an Iranian-Canadian photojournalist who was taking pictures of a protest outside Avin prison and then was herself dragged into Avin prison where she was raped and murdered. And, uh, and the Iranian government has still not um, uh, mm -hmm. accounted for that. Um, how, do, how do people try to get information to one another in this kind of environment? Well, you know, information is very difficult um, uh, because um, since journalists cannot write freely, people cannot read freely. So, of course, you know, the role of people outside Iran becomes crucial because this is how people from inside Iran gives information to people inside Iran because they can't do it necessarily like this. So they have to go around and go through the outside. That's why the internet is so important. Weblogs are important. Um, cell phones are important. So 
the information circulates no matter what, no matter the filtering, no matter you know the repressive measures, because you know there are too many Iranians and the technology is too advanced for the government to totally block it. It's we are not in the 80s, we are not the yeah. Soviet Union of the 60s. It's impossible to close down, and the Iranians know, and the Iranian regime wants to appear less closed than it really is. So it can't just say, okay, you know, I am Saddam Hussein, and I just shot off the internet there is no internet they don't want to do that so then they're stuck because you know they arrest someone and they torture him and a, a journalist like um, Adnan Hassanpour in Kurdistan you know there is a boycott movement the Iranian government doesn't want to the international uh, see, uh, public opinion to know that the Iranians are heavily boycotting the presidential election. So once the elections are over, they go after the activists who have boycott, you know, promoted the boycott. One of them in Kurdistan is killed, you know, in a very brutal manner. People pour in the street to protest. They are shot at. So the journalist who is not a revolutionary has never promoted, you know, regime change or anything. Reports on the demonstration. He, the, the newspaper. Gets gets closed, he goes in, he gets kept in, kept in for months, beaten, tortured, he comes out with, you know, a bail and a sentence on him, and then, you know, he gives an interview to VOA because people are sick of it, you know, they, they feel like they have nothing to lose, yeah. and so no matter what you do, they may yeah. be silent for a few months, yeah. but they start again because they have no hope. So the government cannot close down communication. It can just make it difficult. In fact, as I mean, we've seen in, in the uh, Azeri, uh, among Azeri Iranians, the, again, the same effort to, to lock up journalists who have reported on the issue. Um, has that worked in the, among no, Azeris? No, it would never work. When I started this work, I was amazed at how difficult it was to get information as uh, when I was starting it. But now it is, for, at least for me, it's very easy because they arrest Said Matimpur, who's a journalist. Um, I have teenagers who are, who know how to use computer who know they they would never suspect them of reporting and there are teenagers that they are sitting in uh, coffee nets and then they are uh, sending all the reports information and these reports are forwarded to all the human rights organizations they would never succeed because the whole society within Azerbaijani society they are tired of um, this uh, government restricting everything and they are con trying to control every aspect of their lives and teenagers are the ones that they are doing a wonderful job writing reports and they are getting information and uh, secret police is unable to uh, crack down everybody. Well, have a El Shazli, at this point is the Iranian regime acting from strength or are they acting from weakness? I think from absolute terror. They're terrified. The daily economic life of average Iranian is very difficult. They cannot make ends meet. They cannot provide for their sofre. The sofre is the table, you know, mm -hmm. to, to provide food f on the table. There's mass privatization going on. People are losing their jobs. People are on contracts temporary. They don't know whether they'll have a job today or tomorrow. They are, uh, prices are going up. The oil we've seen, the petroleum, uh, prices of ga gasoline, and the, and, the, and the natural reaction that happens happened on the street in, in Tehran and other places. So the day-to-day -day life of Iranians is be increasingly becoming very difficult. And what these workers are asking for is the right to negotiate, to bargain, the right to be able to form, uh, to advocate and to form an independent union. And I'm sure many other organizations would like to do the same. These are basic economic rights and they're being forbidden, they're being stopped, but um, the government will not succeed. But, but you know, and it's the same for the students. They yeah. started, you know, very close to the reformers, um, the associations. These associations had been formed by the revolutionaries, so their loyalty went to the regime and the revolution. And then they started to think about what's wrong and suggest, like, maybe this is wrong and this shouldn't happen and this shouldn't happen. And before you knew, you know, they were being punished for it. And then again, you know, they would say, well, this doesn't work. The elections are not fair. Punishment. You know, I mean, I have a list of 
how many students have been tried, thrown out of university, disciplined, thrown out of the dormitories just because they are calling for little reforms. So these students, they get in, they get out, they don't want to see the regime anymore. Well, given, given the ruthlessness which, with which the regime regularly responds, what are the prospects for these vari various groups within Iran calling for change, calling for reform of some sort, to be able to get together and, 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 uh, and stand against the regime? Well, I, I, I really believe that um, people will continue. Uh, there are a lot of brave people in Iran, and they will continue to do so, but they need visibility from the outside world. And the visibility, the media is instrumental in giving them visibility. As long as they have this visibility by the civil society, their peers outside Iran and the media, the government will not touch them. Afraid that's going to have to be the last word for today. We're all out of time. But I'd like to thank my guests, Fakhteh Zamani of the Defense of Azerbaijani Political Prisoners in Iran, Roya Boramond of the Boramond Foundation for the Promotion of Human Rights and Democracy in Iran, and Heba El Shazli of the AFL CIO Solidarity Center. Before we go, I'd like to invite you to send us your questions or comments. You can reach us through our website at www.voanews.com/onthe-line. For On the Line, I'm Eric Felton.